complain, but I just no. I just hope it's I just hope it's possible though. No, no worries, it's going to be just be yeah, let's just keep our fingers crossed. It's going to be because having to lose I don't know the, 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 that person that formatted your system, I don't know. <laughs> Is it how you give access to people to your laptop? Why I didn't give my system? Because I know that I have lots of files in there that I wouldn't want anybody to tamper with. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. something as important as a laptop, what you should do next time is you can create a guest account for people that want to use so they can use the guest for maybe for their browser or whatever they want to do. But for your personal yeah. stuff, something as important as this, considering the fact that you're going to take responsibilities of of things, people should not just go into your laptop like that. This this is this is becoming like this because you're not handling and if you are you are having some company Documents. Is this what you tell them? <laughs> I actually um, do. I actually do, and that's mm. why I'm, I'm I'm seeing how I'll be able to. Although we have a server at the, at the office where everything is saved in, so I'm not even troubled about that particular one. But it's my okay. personal files now. Okay. 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 But anyhow, it is. I just hope it turns out well. Okay, that's fine. That's beautiful. All right. Um, let's go into the business of the day. So uh, first, I want to welcome everybody, and I'm sorry for the little uh, chit chat there. My someone formatted my my system and it's a big deal here. But I, but I'm on top of the situation now. So how are we doing? I believe we are all fine. So let me not even start with that. But I want to welcome everybody and as usual, I usually give shout out to those that come very early. Like our senior here, Pascal, Aina came very early, I do Brazil, I think I met you early. Uh Justice, one of our own, was here very early. Uh, okay, I welcome everybody. Though some of us are still going to join us. And I think I'm seeing some cohort 12. Some of you are still in C. The reason we don't have a session for you today was um, yesterday it was a rush. It was a rush hour. And the person who took that particular session was unavailable today. So me, myself, I was unavailable and some other person. But then we are putting things in place by tomorrow. We'll continue with yours. Okay? So today is for um, the Python uh, session, but if you want to stay, you can still stay. There's no problem with that. But if you feel uncomfortable with it, you can leave the meet since it is not for you yet. You it will take you like maybe a month or two to get into it, but it's still okay to stay around. Okay. So uh, I wasn't the one who was supposed to take today's sessions anyway. Is uh, we had a guest, uh, Mr. Elijah. I I've seen some of us complaining that. Our task, I don't know, it is not, um, uh, it is not, ex uh, it is not, um, it's correct, but when we try to check it, it's not going through. So I, but on my own case, I, I, I had that same issues too, and um, it was because it was not really executable, and then I had to, I did it from someone's system, because on my system, I couldn't install Ubuntu. Yeah, I couldn't install Ubuntu then, so I think that was the problem. So when I tried it there and it worked, so I was like, okay, this is the problem. And then I just did a few of them that I felt comfortable with. I left the others, but I will go back to it. But my things were correct, just that it was not executed. That was that. And before I knew what was happening, I, I told him about it. He said, okay, he's going to be around so that he will like open up the whole um, Python thing for us. So that we will, we will know what to look out for in the coming future. He, he might be here in a... In, in a few minutes or so but if not i will just continue to, to take in the session on what we have today so that being said i welcome everybody again to the meet while we are still expecting others to join us so for cohort 11 we started our python um and it's, it's been nice with that yesterday and i can tell you that so for cohort 12 that are here please you listen to this too for the ones that took our c very seriously you realize that python is very um, simple to us yeah, yes, today, yes, that was not really available to handle all my tasks. So today I was just looking at the quizzes. I answered all the quizzes without having even one error, and I was laughing at the office. It was simple enough. And then in doing the tasks, I was doing it in my head. I was holding a book. I would just be, I would be coding with my book, and it was easy enough. And that was because I understood C, but if I didn't understand C, I, I'm not sure I would have been able to um, grab the, the whole concept of it. And the way the Python is, they said it's going to be in a rush. Yeah, because they expect us to already understand the concept of programming. So in this one now, you are just going to apply that concept. It's just like you already know how to speak maybe 
um, French and you want to switch over to another language, all you need to do, you already know what come means. It means someone should, you know, draw close to you. So all you need to do is to learn how to pronounce um, come in an, a, another language and you're good to go. So that was just, that's just how the whole programming thing is. If you know if else statement in C, it's the same thing in Python. The only thing you need to do is to learn how to write it in Python. And that can take you just two minutes and you're done. So that is the whole thing. And I've done all my, I, I've not done all my tasks, but I've done it in my head, as, as I was saying. I've done it in my head, it was simple enough. So I think I will just go ahead and open. While I'm talking, I was just trying to set up some workspace here. So I will go ahead and open. You know, it's not my laptop. Okay. So I will share my screen now. I'm going into my. Uh, Okay. Sorry about that. I'm trying to log into my own uh, intranet. Okay, I'm in. Uh, okay, okay. I think everything is set. Everything is set. Just one more thing. One more thing, and I'll be sharing my screen. Okay, so I'm in my own GitHub now. So I'll be sharing the screen now. This is going to be fun. Trust me. So please, for some persons that are not yet here with us, you can still please help me. Maybe tell them in the group that we've started. Okay, just give me a minute. Let me just um, tell them in the group that we've started so that they could join us. Some persons still get confused of the time till now. I don't know why. Okay, I think that will do for now. Okay, so um, Pascal, can you see my screen? Yeah, yes, yes, I can see your screen. Okay, you, okay good. So you can even see I've not done this up to date. It's not like I've not done it. As I said, I've done it in my head. <laughs> you know what that means. Okay, so I think that's where we start from. Not sure you see. Okay. So, uh, first of all, I think the concept behind this particular project just has to do with data types, variables, and then um, um, operators, which would be logical, um, arithmetic, uh, or any of those operators we already know. So, this is just us, you know, recapping what we already know in C in Python. Yeah, it's going to be, I've not made notes for it yet, but definitely I'll just like our C programming where we had um, a repository for only C. So I think I'm going to create a repository for Python too, so that while we learn, we'll also give us stacks there and we'll do the same thing we normally do in, um, in C. So first of all, I want to ask, what is a data type? We already know this, so it's the same thing here in Python, but I would love somebody to tell me what a data type is. Or what? It means, please help me mute your mic, yeah, so it's not interrupt me. So anybody, if you if, if you actually want to um, say something, you click on this icon here, so you can raise your hand up, and then I'll give you the chance to speak. So who wants to tell me what a data type is in programming as a general? Anybody yet? Or oh, I'll call names. I love to call names. We already know that. Okay, nobody. I, I guess I'll just have to call me. So I'm seeing my friend here, Aina. Aina, please help us. Aina, I believe you are there. Yeah, I'm here. Good, uh, good evening, everyone. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, what do I understand by data type? Um, they are like a type of value a variable has, and they are like um, they, uh, they can be used for logical operations, for mathematical and relational operations, and all. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. That sums it right. Okay. That is basically what a, a data type is. So, in um, just a quick review of it, a data type is basically the kind of data that we want to store in a variable. 
So let me give us a recap on what I use in, in demonstrating that. In our pieces, we have something like text files, MP3, videos, which are MP4, and then we have PDF and all that kind of things. Now, think of those extensions as a data type. So we could have a data type of PDF. We could have that of um, MP4, MP3. All those are data types in the real-life world. But in programming now, we have um, different kinds of data type too, as the case may be. So we could have um, um, int, int, which are um, used to store whole numbers. So when I say int, int are, int are usually whole numbers. So whole numbers could be four, five, 100, could be negative four, minus five, uh, minus seven. So these are int. So int is one of the data types we have in programming as a general. Now in C programming, I'm, sorry, I'm always going to make reference to C because that's what we already know. So we'll build our knowledge on C. Okay, so um, in C, whenever we want to declare a variable, I will tell us what a variable is in a minute. Whenever we want to declare a variable, we um, we make it known to the compiler that this is the kind of variable we are trying to create by attaching um, the keyword, which is the kind of data type to the name of the variable to tell the compiler that this is what I want to store inside of this variable. But in Python here is different. So you don't have to declare your a variable as a particular type. Instead, just go ahead and give it a name and store whatever you want to store inside. So in conclusion here, a data type is a kind of data or a kind of value you want to store inside of your variable. So I will explain what a variable is. So a variable, think of a variable as a container for you to store something inside. Okay, I, I want to make um, reference to our PC. So in our PC too, we have folders. Okay, now those folders are variables. Now, variables are used to store um, data inside of, of them. So in uh, a PC, we have folders that we used to store, um, let's say pictures, um, videos, text files, and those kind of things. Those are an example of what a variable is. So in programming too, it's the same thing. A variable is used to store values. And these value values could be of any kind of data types that we, we already know. So the reason I did not give us all the kinds of data type we have is because I feel we already know, but let me just put it out here. We have int, we have float. This is in Python. Now in Python, we don't have double. You know, you see we have double, but in Python here, we don't have double. So we have int, we have float, then we have character. Or in this case, we don't call it character, we call it strings. Okay, we have strings and, and I think that is all. That's majorly uh, all of them. So not all of them, but these are the basic ones, just like we have basic in C. So what is a float? A float is decimal numbers. So whatever decimal number you have, it is a float. Okay? Then uh, for strings, now strings are basically characters or let's say words. So I'll say Becky, Becky Temple, I saw Becky there. So I must be ringing in my mind. I'll be using Becky. Now, if, 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 if we can recall, in C, we have character and string. And characters are used to store um, characters, just single characters, like A, B, C, but you cannot store words inside of them. But in Python here, in Python here, we have strings. So in strings, you could use it to store as long as your text would be. Okay, and it works um, very well. And we also know that in, in, in strings, we don't treat them like numbers where um, you don't include them in quotes. So whenever you're writing um, strings, you must include them either in single quotes or in double quotes. So if I do this and say um, um, Pascal is valid too. Okay, so this is valid and this is valid. But when you're writing numbers, you don't include them in quotes. Okay, so that is basically that for um, data types and variable here. So as I explained earlier, a variable is used to store other values. Okay, and the reason we have different kinds of data type is because you cannot store different kinds of um, data inside of the same variable. Now let me explain to us what I mean. Let's say I have a variable name. Now, in C, we remember that whenever you want to declare a variable, you need to tell it what kind of variable it is by saying in name, let's sorry, in age, for example, 
which means this is going to hold numbers, right? And it should be whole numbers. That is what means in this integer. So it could be, let's say, uh, 34. But in Python here, whenever you are um, declaring a variable, you don't need to include the data type. When you assign it, then Python itself will, will know what kind of variable it is. That is why they say Python is a high-level programming language, unlike C, that is a low level. Okay, in C, in C, you have to tell it everything you want it to do, but um, Python, it helps you. That's why it's easy to learn. So let's say age. I could say age is equal to 23. Now you cannot say age is equal to 23, and then maybe you want to put a comma and say uh, this, uh, D. This is wrong. It's not going to work. Or you say, uh, but you could say age, and then you store string in it, of course. It's going to work because this is just a name, right? It's not like um, in C where you have to tell it that this is in, and then if you store um, alphabet or text inside, it's not going to work. But in this case, you can give it any name you want and then store your 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 values inside, and that is that it's going to work. So that is that for data types and variables. So a data type is a kind of data you want to store in a variable, and a variable is like a container where you need to hold your variable um, your um other things data okay so now let's move into um operators so the reason i'm moving like this is because this is like the aim of this whole thing our first project these are the things we are um, expected to know that's why i'm moving like this so maybe in the next class i'm going to make note like i did in c programming so that we could follow it accordingly but they said they are going to rush us in python because they expect us to already know the concept that's why we did introduction yesterday and today we are doing if else statement. Excuse me. Okay, sorry for that. Okay. Okay, so let's move on to operators with my mouse. So let's move into operators. Now what are operators? Our operators are basically used to compute in programming. Now, when I say operators, of course, it is the same operators that we know. It could be um, arithmetic operators. I think I should just make reference to this. Now we have, no, let's not go into this, operators. Now, in operators, we could have arithmetic operators, just like we have here, C, arithmetic operator. It's the same thing to Python. We have plus, minus, multiplication, division, and, 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 and the modular which returns a remainder. Now, they all do the same thing, too, in Python. Okay, so it's the same thing here. I move on. So let me give us an example on how this works. So let's say I, the regular examples where you take in two numbers and, and, give, and give the result. So let's say um, num1, let's say the first number equals two. Now, we know equals two, right? Now, equals two. A single equals to is said to be an assignment operator. We already know this in C programming, but for those who don't, single equals to is an assignment operator. So if I say um, norm equals to 12, it means um, this is a variable and this is a data. Okay, and the data type of this is of int because it's a whole number. So I am assigning 12 to norm. So this could be read as um, 12 assigned to norm. Okay, so this is an assignment operator. When you have double equals to, it means equals to the actual equal to. So if I should say something like, or if I write something like um, 12 equals to equal 12, this is true. This is, this is saying 12 is equals to 12, which is true. But if I say, uh, this is wrong if I want to name a variable like this. So if I say norm equals to 12, it means I'm storing 12 instead of norm. It's like you copying a particular file inside the folder. That is what this means. So I'll move on to say num1 equals to, let's say, 45. And then I will say the sum of it. Let me not. The add addition of it. Addition equals to num. This is where I use my um, operator num1. Now you will notice that in, in this place, I'm using num instead of maybe 12 here. Yeah? I'm using num1 instead of, it's still going to work. Remember that. I assign this 12 to norm, and I assign this 45 to norm 1. So just like in mathematics, when we say x equals to 2, and wherever you use x, x is actually 2. So wherever I use norm, it means norm is this. 
and whenever I use num1, it means it is 45. So let's write our first program. So I'm going to print this to the screen and say print addition. If I should run this program, I'm going to explain to the it says 57 because 12 plus 45 is 57. Now that is the operator we are talking about. Now in printing, remember what print is for. Print is for displaying the output. So I'm just going over this because we already know the concept. So print is used to output um, whatever we have to the screen. While then, you see, um, what do you call it? Um, print, I've forgotten what we use in taking in prints, believe me. So print, and in C, we write print F, right? Now, in Python 2, we also use print F. I will show us how we can use that, but first of all, this is how you print to the screen by just print then your parentheses and then whatever if, whatever you want to print to the screen you want to output to the screen you put the name there so in this case i want to output whatever is stored inside of this place to the screen and what i'm storing inside of it is the addition of norm and norm one instead of this so that's why when i print it i'm saying 57 okay if i change the values now let's say i put 10 there it's going to be 22 22 so that this is all Please let me on your hotspot. A video on that uh, array that someone can go back to. Uh, I don't know if it's on the. On the okay, are you asking if? Video. Are you asking if there's a video? Yes, that we made. If it's on the channel. Yeah, of course, of course, there is. If you if you need it, you can ask for it in the group and 
it's, it should be in the playlist. I believe we have the, the link to the playlist. But if you don't, you can ask for it in the group and the media team will attend to you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, no problem. But then, this is not arrays, but it works the same way as the arrays. Yes. I think when we start to do lists, yeah, that we'll see how most of these things work. Okay, so please, okay, blessed. I hope your name is blessed or blessed. Okay, blessed, please ask your question. Okay, that uh, was a mistake. Okay, good evening. Yeah, that end equals to uh, space. There is it equivalent to that uh, that which we have in C. No, we have oh. a, a, a. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I'm I'm hearing you. Okay, that end. I I just saw you use end. End equals to uh, like a uh, space, just like a space in in a uh, quotation. Okay. Yes. Is it equivalent to that which we have in C? Like if we are running a string, like we don't want it to terminate. No, no, no. no. Okay. So it's not. How, so, do, how do we use this here? Okay, okay. What this does, what the end does, is that, um, let's say I wanted to print. Okay, in Python, whenever you are doing something in loops, maybe you want to print something using loop, just like we use loop to iterate through. And whatever it is we have so it this is how it print let's say i want to print i want to look through this um, str and print whatever is inside of it this is how to print it to print h go to the next line to print o go to the next line to print l so it will keep going like that but if you don't want it to do that okay instead of your print statement for example you will do this and now this end means um after each print what you want it to end with okay so in this case now, you know, it's going in a loop. So it will print this. So after printing this, it's going to end it with, with whatever it is here. So if I do something like this and put a comma here, definitely after this H, it will give me a comma. But OK, if I do something like a comma and a space, after the end, it will give me um comma and a space. And then it will print H, O, give me a comma and a space. So that is what the end is used for. OK, OK. Yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, all right. So, um, okay, Hannah, Hannah, you have a question. <clears throat> yes, please. That one, you are you did there. Yeah? I did not really understand it very well. You were saying you can put it in tools, you can put it in TV. So I was looking at my screen, but I don't really know what you are doing. I don't know if mm -hmm. you if I explain it, you can be using your cursor to direct me so that I will see it. When you run the program, I will see what you are really telling us. Okay, okay. Please, these are not arrays. These are not arrays. But rather, I said this works the same way like as array will work. Okay, so let me just explain that again. I think let me just remove this. Let me just remove this. Or let me just remove the whole of this since that is the question. Oh, I'm moving my about in school. Let's move that. Okay, so let me go over that uh, that again. So let's say um, now there's something called indexing in both arrays and anything that is like um, you have something in this um, text, this form. There's something called indexing. Now indexing refers to the position of a particular thing in a group like this. Let me use that word. Now, so indexing usually starts from zero. That is the first thing is usually zero just like in arrays i hope you, you, you see my screen so um in arrays the first thing here will be zero the next one will be one till the end okay so this is how this same thing now work okay so if i'm um 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 saying i want to print something based on the index number so this is zero and this is one this is two so if i want to print um l which is two now. I'm going to index it with two. Now, how do you um, do the indexing thing? This is how it is. So I'm going to comment this out so that it will not affect our program. So I'll put the variable name that I want to print something inside of it and use my squared um, um, bracket. So if I put two inside of it, it means I want to access whatever is stored in at the position of two. So if I count it now, zero, one, two, L is at the position of two. So if I want to print that particular thing, 
I, I've just done it here, S T R O in, in bracket two. If I run it, you see it gave me L. L looks like one. I think I should try another index. I'll try um five. Now let's count it. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. R is five. I run the program. So that is that. Now that is how you do the indexing. Now we have stats, we have end, and we have steps. So when you use just a single value instead of this squared bracket, it means you just want to print one thing at, at a position, right? That is what it means. But if I should start to include this colon here, it means I want to print it in a range. I want to access it in a range, right? So let me do it like this. Remember, it starts from zero through to wherever it's going to. So when you give it a value and then you put a colon, that means the first one there is the start. That means where you want to start from and access it. Now, the next one after the colon is the end, where you want to end. And the next one is the steps. So let me, let's start from the start and the end. So I want to start from zero, which is the first thing here. Remember, we usually start from zero. I'll put my zero and then I'll put the colon. And then let's, I want to end it at, at um, let's say five. Now, in arrays, arrays don't usually um, access the last um, index. So if I'm printing from one to six, one, two, three, four, five, six, if I tell it to print from one to six, it means it's going to print from one to five. It's not going to include the six. So this is how it's, it's, it's reading it. It means from one to, to six minus one. So this last one is usually that number minus one. So if I want to print from one to five, in this case, I'm going to put six here because this last one is read as the number minus one. So let's count it together. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is supposed to be um, whatever we have in this place, but instead it's going to, okay, it's supposed to be T, but instead we are going, it's going to end at five, um, at R, which is the fifth position. So I'll run the program. Oh, sorry. So you see, that's what we just have here. From the beginning of zero till the end, which is six minus one, in this case is five. That is how the start and the end works. Now, another way it works is, if I should say I don't want to put anything here, but then you still have to put the column, because if I don't put this column here, it means I want to in, um, access just what is stored at, at index six. If I run it now, you see T is at index six. But when I include a column, so, and I leave out the um, the start. It means I want to start from the beginning, which is zero. So if I run this program now, you see it's still starting from beginning from this. So instead of putting zero here, I can leave it out and leave it blank, except I want to start from a particular number, let's say from one or maybe from three, then I can put it. But if I'm starting from the beginning, there's no need to put zero, but you can still put it, it works. So that's one way of doing it. So I'll return it back. Now, if I also omit this last one, that means I want it to print till the end. So if I run this program, we have about in school from beginning to end. So that means start from wherever I, let's say I want to start from the fourth character to the end. So I can omit that. And when I run it, it's giving me from zero, one, two, three, four, which is E till the end. So that is how that works. Now, let me return it back to zero. Um, Let's say, let me use 10 here. That means nine, or let me use 11. That is from zero to 11 minus one, which is 10. Now if I put another colon here and give it a number. Now these steps means um, how, many, uh, how many positions I want to skip before I print the next one. So in this case, I'm starting from zero, which is my H, which is my H in this case. So the steps means after um, the first one, I'm going to, to skip and go to the second one, which is like H, and then I'll skip one, two. I will access two. Okay, I'll print L, and then I'll count one, two. I'll print E. So let me run it. So you see, that's what we have. It's skipping it in, in twos. So if I use three, it's going to give me in threes. So that means um, it will print zero, and then it will count one, two, three, and give us B. And then one, two, three, which is T. So that is how the start, the end, and the steps work. I hope you understand it now. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. If you don't, please be free to say you do not understand it.
So for your information now, you can't say you want to use negative indexing. So uh, do you see that? You cannot say you want to use a negative index, but there's a situation where you use negative, just negative one. And that is when you want to print what you want to print in reverse. I'm not going to go into that. So if you are printing it in reverse, only negative one. Okay, you can use other negative, but to print it in reverse with the steps accordingly. But for now, let's stick to what we know. So the, the steps is just used to skip through uh, the positions to print the next one and the next one. Okay, uh, you said you understand, fine. Okay, blessed or blessed, please ask your question. Yeah, uh, please, sorry for... This print, uh, that okay. formatting, whatever, within the print, Yes. print uh, function, the uh, yeah. the uh, is format, format all right? It's something that I used to format. Yes, yes. Uh, how, how does it work? How does it work? Okay, basically, when you use it, um, the the printf function, it means I can um, I can tell my my print my my function now to display something that is stored in a variable, or I could still use it to format my text or my numbers, however I want it to look like. For example, we saw when we had um, three point one four thing one five nine which is like pi in mathematics. And then let's say you want to print it to two decimal uh, places. So you could use that in print F and format it, okay, to whatever you want it to do. So that is basically the print. By the time we start to use it, we'll see how it works. So if I wanted to print um, this um, Hobarton School and, uh, okay, this, okay, I want to say my, the name of my school is Hobarton School. Now, I could say, uh, I could use the normal this thing and say, sorry, um, the name of my school is Hobarton, right? Hobarton School, yeah? And then I print it, it gives me the name of my school is Hobarton School. But then, but then what if this was supposed to be a user input? Let's turn this to a user input and say input, uh enter the name of your school okay so what the, what if this was supposed to be user input that means we don't know what the user is going to input as the name of their school so which means i need to give it a position here and say okay whatever the user input should be what should be added to this place and be displayed to the screen so in this case i can use my print f now if i say let me use this and put um str here, it's not going to work. It's going to treat it as part of the string. If I run it now, it says, enter in all your school. I enter in all my school as LX. Right. Let's see, and hit enter. It just give me back my LX. I said, no, my school is STR, inside curly braces. So it's treating that as part of the text. So if, but if I use my printf and do the same thing, when I run it and then I enter in all my school is LX and I print it, it says, the name of the reason you are seeing this ALX is because it's stored inside of STR. So let me remove this. Run it again. And I know my school. I say, sorry, I like my name too much. ALX. Now my school is ALX. So that is one way you could use for now. This is one of the simplest way you could say, okay, I'm using my print F to do this particular thing. But the other ways you could use um, the print statement without using printf and then still still um, achieve this particular result but that is not the aim of this now you should just know you can you could go on and search for it how you could display output with print different ways you could do that and you'll see other ways you could integrate it so i hope you you understood the concept of it yeah from clarify the... thank you very much okay thank you so any other question let us just understand what we are doing before by tomorrow we'll enter into the if else and we spend our time to and see how we can understand it more. A any other questions? Okay, no other questions for now. So I was saying from the beginning that the same way we did our C programming, where we had a repository, so that if you want to maybe quickly rush into this place and let me zoom out a bit, rush into this place and check what we, we've done. It, it was easier for us that somebody who has missed the, the session could from the video to be looking at the video while going through the repository. We have almost some of the lessons here. And then we had tasks too that you could use to practice with while you learn. 
So I think we are going to do that. So from tomorrow too, I'm going to start doing that. So that while we have our sessions, we'll be looking at, we'll be learning from our repository and then we'll go on to attempt some of the tasks we might have. Because we, we know that in the real life world too, nobody will be giving you this ALX tax. And because you cannot do ALX tax does not mean you, you did not understand the concept. Just like as I said um, before, um, in school, they, they might teach you two plus two is four. And when they give you assignment, they will then give you 2.4 plus 3.1. For Christ's sake, you do not learn um, um, decimal numbers, rather whole numbers. And then they're giving you assignments on decimal numbers. So it does not mean you do not understand it, but then they, they were not giving you something of that. Of that. So that was why you could not do it. So if you cannot do LX tax, it does not mean that you do not understand the concept. So some of the um, the tasks we usually have in here are, you know, the regular tax that you could go in and check and to check if you really understand the concept. So if you can solve like three, four on a particular um, concept, it means you understood the concept. But then air lesson is just very difficult that you need to spend more time on it or explore other ways you could do it. So I think by tomorrow we, we, we are going to start doing that if you are going to want that. Okay, so... Um, just to make us understand, when that starts, we are still going to continue our usual way of you fork the repository, you clone it, and then you attempt what if you are going to have tax, you attempt the tax, and then you come back and create a pull request so that we can also review what you have done and then give you feedback. Maybe something was wrong, we'll tell you, do it like this, or you did too well, and we'll still say, okay, try it this other way. From there to everybody will be learning and you know, we'll track our progress. So I think that will be all for now. So I think I will just give space for anybody who might have something to say before we close. Anybody? Anybody? Do we have anybody have something to say? I think we've come to the end of the session for today. So that some people from where their time zone are really, really late. Okay. I'll, I can't pronounce your name, bro. Please just speak. Okay. Yeah, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I can hear you. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you for the support that you give us. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Okay, I appreciate you a lot for that. And, I, and thank you too for being here. Because it would have been possible if you were not here. Okay, I thank everybody for being here. Okay, Jukesin. Okay, please speak. Okay, good evening, everybody. And good evening, David. And uh, thank you very much for this uh, for your for the insightful tutorial. I just wanted to ask. I don't know. If I, I I had network issues, but there's something I wanted to ask for format specifiers. How do you specify the number of decimals you want to print? If you're printing, for instance, a float uh, variable, I want to specify. Let's say print two decimal numbers. Okay. I don't know if you did that example, but yes, we, we did. But okay. let me okay, let's just let just let me just clear here and just do number equals to I'll still use the same number we use in our tag. That was zero three point one four one five nine. That is pi mathematics. So I'll just clear here. Start from the beginning. So when you want to do that, I will do this. I'll say um let's say I'll say the the number is then my colleague braces we already know how to put that then i'll put my number inside of it and then to format it you put um, a colon there and then since it is a flute right now we know in c that integers were represented with uh, modulo d let's say in python it's going to be d so float here is f Okay, so we also remember that in C, we used to specify it with using dot two to give it how many decimal places you want. If you wanted three, you use dot three instead of your format specifier. So in Python, here is the same thing. If I wanted two decimal places, I would say dot two F. That is still inside of here. This is one way of doing it. So it, I think if I close this code here, oh, sorry, if I close this code here and print it, it should give us. 3.14. I wanted three and I put three. Give us 3.142 because it is fluid to round off this and give us 3.142. Okay. 
So this is one way, or, or I would say the easiest way of doing it for now. Mr. Dixon, are you there? Thank you very much. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, sir. Okay. So I believe as we are going on, we'll see how we could use the format keyword too to format whatever we want to format. But for now, let's just stick to what we know. So does anybody have any other thing to say? But we'll end it. Might be a contribution too to say, okay, let's do it like this another time. It helps. I love to take contributions. Mr. David, I want to drop something. I was trying to use this same F function you used for print F. Okay. But whenever I try it on the the compiler, it's not giving yes. me what I want. I just wanted mean? let me just drop it in the message and see if you can copy and look at it. Okay. Okay, oh, enter two numbers, just split F F. Okay. Okay. Um okay, okay. This might not work. This might not work. This might not work. Why wouldn't it work? But I was trying yeah. to see. Yeah, yeah. The, when we say format, because we are using um oh I copied everything. Because we are saying you should use um print f to format does not mean that it has the power to do this your formatting that you are trying to do here okay this is like you trying to write c instead of python so this what, format only works if you add if you use that format um, um keyword you just have to do format yes yeah, exactly that's why i was saying yeah, that's what i was saying with time we, we will see how we could do the formatting things Okay, so this is this is how you could have done this. Try to work for you. I would say num one, and here I would say num num what num two, and then equals to sum. So let's run the program and see if that works. Enter two numbers. Like as you enter two numbers at once. To space. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You have to split. There's a space. It's splitting. Okay. So you see, this could have been the easiest way you could have done this. So for that type you are trying to use, you are going to use the format keyword itself to do it, and we wouldn't go into that now. So let me copy your code and send it back to you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I think that should help for now. You will start doing the, the format keyword thing, and then you can start doing your hard stuff, because I can see you are already doing the difficult things, be the... I've forgotten our mantra. If it had things, yeah, had things. Okay, thank you for that. I believe somebody has also seen that and they've learned something from it. So I believe we are good now. Okay, thank you, everybody. So I want to thank everybody for coming out. I mean, it will not always be a success if everybody said they don't want to come out. So it shows that we want to learn and we want to also contribute because from here to have learned a couple of things. And I wouldn't have done that if all of you were not here. So thank you everybody for coming out and I hope we are going to come out again another day so that we could continue to teach each other because in LX, of course, we come to teach us. We have to teach our, we have to help ourselves. So please, whenever you are called upon to take a responsibility in the community to, to contribute, please always respond with um, a good attitude. So I want to thank everybody for coming out. Till next time again. We'll meet maybe by tomorrow. Um, sorry, so, sorry, please. I am um, a question. Okay. I do not understand that statement he made because I just joined the community. Um, I think it was yesterday. Oh, or, yesterday. Yeah, or day for yesterday. Yeah. So, are you guys only um, appointing teachers for every section? Mm, okay, not like we always appointing teachers, but then yeah, we usually call on people who can who want to, you know, be among those who are going to say, okay, I want to also take um, the responsibility of taking a session. We all usually give time for that so that you two could also, in the course of trying to teach others, you will also learn a lot too. So we usually do that. If you're interested, you could signify it to and I will make arrangements. I'll add you to the list of persons and whenever a particular concept comes, when it's maybe your turn, I will say, okay, you take this. Oh, okay. 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 okay and you. I welcome you to the community. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. No problem. Okay. Welcome. So, okay. Want to say something? I said, welcome, Mr. George. You're welcome. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank Please. You very much. Thank you. Okay.
Thank you. We are, going to, we, are going to welcome, we, are, we are we are we are going to welcome you in the group and we are, we are the, okay for those who are just joining us too. We have mini groups. That instead of the community, we have mini groups where we've assigned some of us to also be head of groups. Okay, so if you're interested now, these uh, mini groups are there, so you could have people you could study with, like pair partners. Okay, so we have, I think, in groups of four, something like that. One person is the leader, so one leader and three. Now, the leader are not choosing based on what you know, but based on, um, you know, some other things, okay, that are, are best known to us too. So if you are interested in, join, in being paired with someone or some person, there's a form in the group. A big ugly form, you could go ahead and I'll drop the form after now. You could go ahead and fill it. And then when I'm doing the next pairing, I'm going to pair you and drop the link to the pair again. So you could go and see the people you are paired with and link up with them and do whatever you are going to do. So that's for those who are just joining us. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank welcome. you very much. All right. So till tomorrow or till next time. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. You can unmute your mics now and say good night to everybody. And thank you for coming out. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.